Oh, hey there. Sorry, I was falling asleep at my desk. I was sitting here and watching my streaming dashboard, waiting for certain conditions to be met. It was getting a little tiring. Oh, you know what I can do? I'll send an alert on my dashboard to notify me when those conditions are met, and that way I don't have to sit here and watch it all day. Let's take a look how. So this is my streaming dashboard in Spotfire, and what I'm looking at is different equipment on oil and gas wells in the Texas region. And I'm looking at pumps, and as the pressure climbs on these pumps, you can see these values turning red. That might be indicating that something's going wrong, pressure's building up on the pumps. It's not at this steady state level right here as it should be, this flat green level. So to notify myself with an alert, in Spotfire 10.6, I can just right click right here in the streaming visualization and go to alerts for streaming data. And this is gonna launch the Live View web application that's part of TIPCO streaming and Spotfire data streams. Now you can get here without doing that right click. If you're not using Spotfire 10.6, you can just go here through TIPCO streaming and you can still set up these alerts even with previous versions of Spotfire, uh, Spotfire 10.0 onwards. Um, but right now I have this nice shortcut, so let's look at how we can set up these alerts. So it's here, let's go and let's go ahead and add an alert rule. And I'm gonna create my first alert here. There's these different configuration options I'm gonna walk through. You have an alert rule name. I'm just gonna call this pressure alert. I have a severity on low, medium, or high on how I wanna prioritize this alert. And I can choose if it's part of an alert group. So I'm gonna leave that in its default and I need to give it a message. I'm just gonna give it something generic, pressure alert triggered. And below, I can set the conditions for how this alert fires. Now there's a time-based alert, which is just based on the time of the tuples or the rows that are being sent into Spotfire. Um, if you wanna do it on set intervals or something like that. But I wanna do more of a condition-based alert where I'm gonna do a query. So I'm gonna to go to query-based alert here and um, I'm gonna look at the sensor data. So this is the live view table that Spotfire is accessing um, for, from TIPCO Streaming. TIPCO Streaming puts out this live view table, Spotfire grabs the data and that's all streaming in. Um, so the sensor data is what I'm working with and these are the different uh, columns uh, available in there. This is the schema of that sensor data table. I see pressure here and it's really quite simple. I'm just gonna type in pressure uh, above 580 and below I have an option on if I want this alert to fire immediately when that threshold exceeds uh, the pressure goes above 580 or if I want it to trigger only after the pressure is over 580 for a certain amount of time, I can say if the condition is true for however many milliseconds and that way maybe I'm waiting so it's not just going above and below the threshold, it's actually hovering above the threshold for some time, five seconds, 10 seconds, what have you. That can, that can be the way this alert's triggered. So I'll leave this as immediately, and then quiescence is a really cool feature. So if I have new sensor data points coming in every second or millisecond, and that's all above 580, I'm just gonna get alert, 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 alert. It's gonna be very obnoxious, um, probably not what I'm looking for. So what quiescence does is tell basically the TIPCO streaming to the alerts uh, functionality to go to sleep for a certain amount of time. So if I set a quiescence here at, let's say, 3,000 milliseconds, that means after an alert is triggered, it will wait three seconds before firing the next one. Um, three seconds is still pretty frequent, but it'll be very illustrative for example. So let's just go with that for now. So these are the conditions that the alert is um, triggered on. Next is the action. So what should it do when the alert is triggered? And if you have TIPCO streaming, you have all of these options available to you. Um, if you're using Spotfire data streams, which is a kind of pared down version of TIPCO streaming, then you'll only have publish alert and send email. Uh, both are very useful. Um, send email obviously can uh, just tell you to go look at the dashboard. You don't have to be in any kind of Spotfire or TIPCO environment to know that something went wrong or right, whatever you're looking for. Um, I'm just gonna use the publish alert and this is gonna publish to a live view alerts table. I'll show you why uh, in a second, but for now let's just finish configuring this. Um, I have here an override message option and I'll select this and I can actually take the specific well ID or any specific value on that row um, and put that in here. So if I do dollar well ID, that means whatever well ID this alert was triggered on will be displayed in this message. 
and I'll just say well ID pressure alert, and this is going to override the initial message that I have. So here I'll hit validate and save, and I just need to enable this, and let's return to my Spotfire dashboard. So this is my Spotfire dashboard. I'm going to go to my data source here, and this is my streaming data, and I'm going to configure this connection. So I was only bringing in that sensor data table from LiveView. Um, but by default, LiveView creates this LiveView alerts table as well, which we are just writing our alerts out to. So let me bring that one in as well. All right, so this is the information about the alerts being sent. And this is going to tell me that that table is going to be added as a new data table in Spotfire, which is exactly what I want. So I'll hit OK here. OK, and now let's go back to my Spotfire dashboard. And I'm just going to create a simple visualization. I'm just going to bring a table in. And let's make this so that this is a sensor data coming off the live view table on sensor data. And this is the live view alerts. So we can see here some alerts have already fired uh, for that pressure going above 580. So let's take this. Um, we have a message as well. So this was the message that I wanted to fire. And that's showing each individual well ID. And let me go ahead and do just something simple like a bar chart here so we can take a look at this. So I'm going to configure this bar chart with live view alerts. And for now, I'm just going to use message. And we can see that right here, we can already see that this well had one pressure alert. This well had three pressure alerts. And this well had, again, just one pressure alert. So as this kind of continues on, you'll see these numbers climb. Um, I'm going to move this to horizontal, and I'll kind of fast forward this so you can see some more alerts firing here. We're just showing this with a table visualization and a bar chart, but you can use KPI charts or whatever you'd like to represent those alerts. Uh, remember, you can also use email, which is very helpful. If you're, if you're using Spotfire data streams, you have this option in email. If you're using the full TIPCO streaming uh, application, then you can send Java commands to trigger other applications. You can use uh, the send tuple method to trigger other different functions and processes in your event flow. Uh, there's a lot of sophisticated things you can do. But overall, hope this helps you monitor your analytics in real time. And uh, we're glad you joined us today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.